So we are going to be recording the session today, um, just so everyone knows. Um, so just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, we are in WebEx. I think most people are probably pretty familiar with WebEx right, um, now, but just for those who may not be, um, we encourage you to use uh, or to, to keep yourself on mute when you're not speaking. That helps with the background noise. And then, um, you know, you, if you have a question or something, you want to take yourself off mute, um, that, that'd be fine. In fact, I'm going to put myself on mute here soon. Um, we do encourage you to use the chat function because we do want this to be an interactive session. And I'll keep an eye on it for our speaker so that um, we can address any questions that come through. We really do want this to be an interactive session. So I encourage you to use that chat. Um, you can change the view to like a speaker view if you'd like to. There's a little um, icon in the top right um, corner where you can kind of change your view um, so that you can see the screen and the speaker um, as well. So with that, I will um, pass it over now actually to our speaker for the day. We're really, really excited to have Marty O'Toole with us today. You're really going to enjoy this session on reinventing yourself. It's really timely, um, you know, just given the current environment. Uh, so Marty is um, has been an executive at Gojo for I think over 22 years now, right? Just over 22 years, is that right? Yes, Marty? that's right. Yep. Yep. Right. So, I'm in the 23rd year. Yeah, that's fantastic. Um, is currently the VP of hand sanitizer at Gojo, which is wow. I have you probably have stories to tell. Yeah. <laughs> We're making new stories every week right now. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, it's Alum of Cleveland State University, but has been involved with the University of Akron for quite some time on our marketing executive advisory board. So we are just really lucky and just so pleased to have you here today, Marty. I'm going to pass it over to you now. So thanks so much for being here. Yeah, good. Thank you. I'm very happy to be doing this. Um, as we get started, I'm seeing I have an annotation request. Becky is requesting to annotate the shared content. Um, I don't know who Becky is. I'm sure she's a lovely person, but I'm, I think I should be declining this request, I think. Right, so Becky, yeah, sorry. I, I didn't see that one come through. It's just like a little icon for me. So yeah, I, I would think I would think so. And then I right. also see a question about the suitable app. There, um, Ryan was right. There is will be a barcode to scan at the end. So yeah, sorry, that was me. I'm new. I hit the wrong button. Oh, God. oh okay. <laughs> okay, good. Um, okay, good. Well, with that, we'll uh, we'll get to work. Uh, one of the things that I think is probably very interesting about this this series is that you're going to hear radically different voices from really different people, right? There, people's, you know, people are just different in who they are, and and the topics are so different, and and so so hopefully you're you're buckled up for a little bit of randomness in the kind of things that that come, but hopefully each one is is itself interesting and valuable in its own way, and so so I have no idea in terms of continuity what kind of what kind of things you talked about in the last session or what kind of things you'll talk about in the next session. Um, but I was I was delighted when I was asked to talk on the topic of reinventing yourself. And so I thought I would just simply step up to the bar and address this one as best I can, because these topics are very interesting to me. And so um, so with, with with apologies for no continuity to anything else going on in this in this series, we'll uh, we'll just uh, we'll we'll talk about what I think about how we invent, reinvent or reinvent ourselves. And so we'll get started on that. Um, again, my name, is, my name is Marty. I've been at Gojo forever. I live up in Chagrin Falls. I grew up in the Cleveland area. Um, and so I will, I can advance this slide here. Hang on. And so, so just as, as a brief introduction, so you kind of understand where, where this voice is coming from. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm in my early 60s now, which is me. That's a lot of learning along the way. Um, I'm surprisingly still pretty cool for somebody 60. And so, so that's a good thing. Um, I've been working hard for more than 40 years and, you know, working are all working experiences are all are all, you know, challenging learning experiences. And so, um, and so I've got, I've got a fair amount of learning and things under my belt. Um, been married to the same lady for 37 years. We've got our grown kids that are our best friends and we're, we're super happy with them, super proud of them. Um, personally, my, my philosophy is I, I've really been a fairly a fairly focused student of, of success journeys increasingly over the last 15 or 20 years. Um, my, I, you, you probably hear me make reference to God quite a bit in this. And, <clears throat> and I don't know, that's not really the charter of this. And I'm not, I'm not soliciting any kind of religious perspectives. And I'm not preaching or doing missionary work or something. But, but for me personally, I think, you know, how we, we find our purpose in our life. You know, I, I find it hard to talk about that without talking about you know about about you know really like like 
like who God made you to be. And so, so it's, it's part of my, it's part of, it's part of the voice you're going to hear today. Um, I was raised Catholic, and learned to give and take in Catholicism, what I like and don't like. And for the last 10 years, I've been studying Buddhism with some focus and, and I'm, I'm sort of picking and choosing what I like there. And so I am right now what they call a cafeteria Catholic and a buffet Buddhist. And so I'm kind of um, assembling my, assembling my models from, from those schools of thought. Um, I'm really a big fan of secular Buddhism, which is which is just really understanding healthy psychology. You know that the psychology of being a healthy person and with with healthy life principles and practices. And so I'm a big fan of secular Buddhism, and I would encourage anybody to to follow up on that. I'm super blessed and grateful. Um, I, I do a fair amount of work with students at Akron and at CSU, and in that time, I've gotten to know dozens of. I say kids. I know students aren't kids, but you know my kids are in their 30s, and so I say kids, but you know, I've, I've gotten to know dozens of, of students who just impressed me so much, you know, and, and I learn from and it just keeps me coming back. And so I'm, I'm here, I'm happy and with energy and I'm, I'm eager to help each of you on your way for whatever, for whatever I can bring of value. Um, and I think, uh, I think, of course, you know, there's, there's sort of a starting point to this that, that, that I picture myself when I was a student and I was slogging my way through my English degree at Cleveland State while working as many hours as I could at Heinen's and didn't know what the heck the world held for me, you know, and doing hopefully not too many dumb things along the way. But but if I knew then what I know now, boy, I don't I don't know what would have turned out different, but a lot of things would have been different. And so and so I I know I, I have perspectives now that I didn't have then and and if I can help you by sharing those things with with you along your way, then then you you'll be better equipped than I was when I got started. And so that's just sort of my entry point to that. Um, hopefully that uh, sets the table a little bit for the kind of the kind of things I have on my mind as we get into this. Um, so far, so good. Kim, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna be clipping along. I don't. Um, so far, I don't, so good. I don't see the chat, Kim, but I see you. And so um, I would welcome I would welcome chat topics. Um, you know, we're scheduled to be done in, in 50 minutes, um, but I think I think we have a, a, a good amount of time to work with things. And so so, I, so we can we can pause and chat and discuss whatever people would like to. Um, so so reinventing yourself. What a super cool thing to talk about. Right. And I and I I'm guessing that that when people are are in their in their late teens or early 20s or, or whatever you are in, in, in your journey as a college student you know people think a lot about you know who do i want to be and 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 when i when i sat sat down with the pencil and paper and started really thinking about reinventing yourself um i i arrived at a pretty important insight we get started with and that is you do not need to be reinvented you know whoever you are i promise you everybody within sound of my voice you do not need to be reinvented you are fine. You're just fine. You are whoever you are supposed to be. And so let's let's kind of pause there and appreciate that for a minute, right? That 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 your journey is not about it's not about changing who you are. You know, if you're a fish, you're not going to turn yourself into a bird, right? It's about really understanding who you are. And so and so I think I think that that the 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 topic of reinventing yourself, becoming who you should be, you know, I think it starts with accepting yourself and knowing that everything everything you can ever be or should ever be is already inside you and if it's not already inside you you know it's not there and so and so i i would propose that that this conversation starts with with really peacefully over a period of time considering who you are what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses and you know what are your gifts and what are your challenges everybody's got them everybody was dealt a different set of cards you know i personally my whole life, I have sucked at sports, right? I'm pretty good at some things. I'm actually a pretty good trash talker out on the field. Um, <laughs> but I, I could, I, I have sucked ever since we got done playing flag football. I've sucked at everything you can do in sports. And I needed to make sure of that, right? It's not, it's not who I'm built to be. You know, in other ways, I think I've, I think I've got some pretty good cards I play with. And so, um, so I would, I would encourage everybody to start by embracing the fact that you're fine. Just pause there for a second. You're fine. You've got all the cards and gifts you need to be successful in this world. And so as we talk about reinventing ourselves, we do not talk about it as if the current you is not good. The current you is where you start. 
that everybody starts someplace different. Right? So, so really please resonate with that. And, and actually, even though it's at the beginning of our content today, uh, I would ask that that be maybe one of the biggest takeaways from it, right? Rest comfortably when you're on the below and know that you are fine. And you're just on a journey and you're fine. So don't be impatient, don't be freaked out, don't be worried about it, you're fine. Okay, good. So then, so then with, with that as a foundation, then I think that the question frames up differently, right? The question frames up to how do you become the best version of you, right? I'm not gonna turn into Marty O'Toole, you know, NBA star, you know, I'm gonna turn into whoever, whoever I'm built to be. And so, and so I would, I would propose for, for students or anybody in their, you know, in stage there in their life that the question is, is for each of you to consider personally is how do you become the best version of who you are? And that really frames it up differently, I think, right? And I would, I would ask people to, to just kind of pause and chew about that for a little bit. Um, I would invite any chat. Does that, does that, does that resonate well? Does that um, come as a surprise? that we're going to frame the content up that way? And if not, we'll keep going. <laughs> um, and I, I, I take silence as this is going really, really well. And so, yes. so, so, so absence, <laughs> absence of anything else, I'm gonna trust that this is working. That's perfect. Um, okay, so, so I do find though, in, in my work with, with students, that there, I, I encounter some students who like, really have this passion and this this confidence that they know who they are and and how do I get there and you know and and and, and when I encounter those students you know that the conversation wants to go to these truisms of you know be courageous and focused and go get it and make it happen you know but in my heart and I'm when I'm talking to students and I encounter a student who has that certainty over who they are in my heart I'm kind of really doubting Right in my heart, what I'm what I'm feeling is, you know, you may well be wrong. You know, nobody really has this stuff all figured out at age 18, 19, 20, 22, 25. You know, and if you really, really know who you are, maybe you do. Maybe this is great and God bless you. Um, but my guess is you maybe you don't, you know, and I and I find some people who I who I think paint a picture of who they want to be with some kind of urgency because they feel incomplete or sad if they don't know where they're trying to get to. And so for that reason, they conjure up this exciting image of who they want to be, and then they wrap themselves around it. You know, and, and when I find people who are so certain of who they want to be and they can lean into it with such equal passion, you know, part of me is like, back up the truck. You have no idea who you want to be. And so, and so what I, what I would say to them, if, if I had permission, like family, I would say, you know what, you're probably wrong. You know, your path in life is going to be not at all what you expect it to be. And it's fine if, if you're 19 and you believe you want something and, and you're, you're excited to go after it, great. You know, it's a great place to start and point yourself and, you know, work with focus, but, um, but, but stay really, really potted in the fact that you have no idea how this is going to turn out. You know, and so in fact, you're on a journey and you might have an exciting vision at the beginning of this journey, which you think the end might look like. Um, but but I think I think that that almost everybody, I would say like 90 some, 90, 99 percent of people who I would think of as college students, they really don't know what their life journey wants to be, you know, and so so it's OK. And don't don't feel anxious about that or don't there's something missing because you don't have that organizing destination that you can chat so comfortably about in an elevator pitch, which is like so silly, right? Um, and so, so, so it's okay just to know that you're at the beginning of a long journey and then your path is not at all what you're gonna be. And so, so don't, don't, be, <clears throat> don't be too impressed by people who seem to know what they want and they're gonna go get it. Um, it just means they haven't figured out yet they're wrong. Um, so, well, Becky weighed in, all right, Becky, I saw something flash up there. Um, good. Yeah. So, right. Marty, do you have a yes. question for that, though, um, if you don't mind? Yes. So, you know, we, you know, try to instill this in students too, right? You know, to, you know, you're, it's your first year of college and take your time and, you know, it's okay if you don't know right away, but then eventually we do kind of say, okay, well, you should probably pick a major and you should probably know what in field you want to go into. And then we tell them, 
to go into these interviews with confidence. And so how do they still show confidence, but also like the humility of knowing that it might change? So they're trying to build their network or go for a job or, you know, how do they not seem un still uncertain about things? How do they show, still kind of show that confidence, but also knowing things could change? Yeah, you know what, I think um, anybody who's the, the the prep polished and ready sessions with me we, we've talked about this you know and, and i think i think that when i'm meeting people who are who are networking because you're supposed to be networking you know while while the college age i i really am sorting on on, on a very primary criteria and this is true this person is an idiot this person is not an idiot right it's is 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 presenting yourself, introducing yourself to somebody where where they look at you and they go, wow, this person is not an idiot. This has good self awareness, you know, and has, a, has kind of a, an easy smile because they know who they are, you know. And this this then is the person who I'm to, you know, which is which is really radically different than than that, that you know hundred words in one breath elevator pitch, you know, and so um. And so, and so I think that that there's actually kind of a nice, comfortable authority that comes with simply being a nice person on a journey. That's not the same as being random or being confused or being, you know, unkempt in some way. Being able to to express to others that you you've kind of got your wits about you and you're you're a good, smart person who wants to start some places and take next steps. You kind of have a good sense of humor over the fact that, you know. So let's let's all work together and be nice to each other, right? I mean that that to me is what goes on in a great elevator pitch. Um, so so if the topic is, you know, how to how to become the best version of you, that it, it, it's interesting. Right? So what does that mean? And I'm listening in to to kind of think about it while while we're noodling it around for a couple of minutes here. You know, I mean, clearly, you know, Kim and I are totally different people, and what is to be the best version of Kim? You shouldn't try to be the best version of Marty or vice versa, right? And so Becky and everybody else on the phone here, you know, as we're having this conversation, just kind of kind of listen, you know, from a sort of a quiet place and, and figure out what what is maybe the best version of you. So you can frame it a couple ways. Oh, good. Okay, good, Becky. Um, I missed it. It just pops up and it flashes off. What did Becky say, please? Uh the question was, she said, I've always struggled with the networking part. I think of myself as socially awkward with new people. Listen, Becky. Um, she asked any tips on how to work through that, even at, at my age, <laughs> at any age. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Um, let's do this, please. Um, I would I would be happy to do an hour on that topic. Um, and let's let's do this, please. Um, Becky, I would be I'd be super happy if you and I just connect afterwards. And talk about it um, if you'd be comfortable doing that. Um, when we get done, maybe you know Kimberly can help us exchange phone numbers, and then we can talk about it. I have um, I've talked to dozens and dozens of of students about this. You know, be it my own kids or my nieces and nephews or students, and it's something I I have a ton of a ton of certainty about. And so I would love to help. Um, Perfect. She okay. said that would be great. So I will connect the two of you afterwards. And yeah. for those of you, the others on the call. You know, these speaker sessions are as much about the content that's being delivered as it is about the connection. So we have great speakers like Marty who are willing to connect with you. So take advantage. Um, I will connect you with Becky afterwards. Good, thank you. So so as you're as you're as you're you're pausing to to look at yourself in kind of the mirror and say, so would it to be your best self, what does success mean to you? You know, how can you be really happy? I promise you this, success is not about your W-2. Success is not in any way about what your LinkedIn profile says or about what your business card says or about how you might have someday impressed the person who was really bitchy to you in high school, right? It's just none of that matters. And so and so so think about, you know, between you and your soul, literally between you and your soul, what will make you deeply happy? You know, what is your version, your vision of a life well lived? You know, I mean, if you think about that, it's, it's probably not usually the stuff that one talks about in an elevator pitch, right? How can you bring value to the world? Who are you called to be? You know, again, we're not going to get it in, you know, some five minutes of WebEx reflection, but I think these are questions, right? When, when, you're, when you're sorting out who you are and who you want to be, 
you know, it's really, it really is important to start to, to look through these lenses and you might, you might surprise yourself. You know, you might have a, a, a grandparent who lived a very humble existence, you know, and never would impress anybody with their LinkedIn, but they were people of, of like wonderful depth of personality and courage and wisdom, and they helped people, right? You know, the, the, the person who, who pops for you, you know, as, as somebody who really lived a life well lived could be very, very modest, you know, and so do not, you know, wrapped up in this in, in a career accomplishment perspective, right? Because because what is your life well lived could have absolutely nothing to do with anything that would ever show up on a business card, right? So think about think about who you are called to be. And of course, there's so many hats that we wear, right? You know, it, 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 there's there's roles that we play, and there's 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 some of these areas that that might really resonate for you, and some of them that really might not, you know, and some of them. Don't mean anything to you now, but when you're 45, they'll mean all, everything to you, right? And when you're 65, they'll mean everything to you, you know. And so, who you will be is going to change over the course of your life. And so, and so, as you as you sort of anticipate that, you know, if if you're lucky enough to get 90 years to to walk around this earth and learn things, right? That you're gonna you're gonna wear a lot of different hats, you know. And so, and so again, I I would encourage you to have a much more expansive sense of who you want to be than the kind of stuff we normally talk about in PPR and elevator pitches. Right. And so, um, so, so just sort of, just sort of appreciate, you know, that the framework of the conversation is that big, you know, and on one hand, it makes it daunting, but it, on the other hand, it doesn't, on the other hand, it makes it easy. It's like, so just relax, take a pill and think it through a little bit and just appreciate that the, the scope of the things in front of you. Right. And appreciate it that in the moment you could, you know, you could you could put yourself in one of these cells and go, I really know what I want to be when I'm a spouse. I really know what I want to be when I'm when I'm you know teaching somebody else something. You know, and so so just sort of scan. You know, when, when you get a chance, scan the different hats you'll wear over the course of your life and the roles you'll be in. You know, and, and of course, you know what what you might think you want to be when you're sitting in an accounting class at the University of Akron in nineteen or 2021, whatever this is. You know that all kind of that all kind of looks pretty small, in the in the big scheme of all this stuff, right? So 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 get yourself grounded in the big scheme of all this stuff. So now that I've made it like really obtuse, the question is: So who will you be, right? And you know, and all we're doing here is we're just kind of like putting lenses and perspectives and principles on the table. But um, but you know, sorting this out is a journey that takes years, right? I, if I if I didn't. If I didn't watch my wording, I bet I would say the word this hour like a hundred times, you know. And so, and so, so with you sorting out what does it mean to be the best version of yourself, you know, you can do it earnestly and to the best of your ability. And I promise you, at age forty-five, it's going to look a lot different than it does now, right? And so, it's, it's like it's like the life journey to figure out who you will be. It takes years. And of course, your journey is yours alone. And um, go ahead, please. What did I miss there? I missed somebody say something. Yep. So uh, Martin Thompson had a question. He said, what if you have a hard time discerning whether you are on the wrong track or your goals are just changing? Oh, that's a great one. Um, I would say, um, I would say, listen to your heart for real. Listen to your heart. Right. And sometimes that takes courage. It, ta it takes courage to, to acknowledge that maybe you're on the wrong track. You know, I know I don't, I, I can speak to this as a parent. You know, and I don't, I, I'm not talking to you now really as a friend, but I, I, but as a parent, you know, what we would tell our kids is you, 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 you take your best shot because you have to be in motion. You have to be going somewhere. You have to be working on something. You can't just sit there and scratch yourself and have angst all day long, right? You've got to be working on something, you know, but it takes courage to say, this wasn't necessarily a mistake, but now I know more. Now I know better. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm going to change the path. Um, and I think that if, if you're, if you're, Getting kind of like like some kind of some kind of impulses inside of you that the path you're on isn't the path that's right for you. I would say that the only thing you could do really wrong would be to ignore those impulses, right? Especially at a young age. Um, so I would be really attentive to those impulses. Um, so so your journey is yours alone, and and I I have no idea what you know what 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 Martin's journey is or Kim's journey is or might, you know, have anybody other than myself, but I do have some thoughts to help you on your journey, right? And so, so I have some things that I really, really believe are important 
and they're kind of principles, they're kind of lessons learned. And if you don't mind, I just kind of would like to walk through some principles. And I'm telling you what, I really, really, really believe in the stuff I'm about to tell you. So pay attention. <laughs> um, obviously, a great way to, to get this started is, is success is measured by what you give. It's not measured by what you get. You know, and, and in our society right now, of course, you know, society is just sort of half a mess and it's hard to get good role models. And the media, of course, tees up all these unhealthy things that people should aspire to be. Um, but it's probably probably a very good place to get started is is you know, is when you when you when you start to think about what is the best version of yourself, you know, a good way to a good way to to take measure of that is what you will have given, what you will have done for others. You know, um, it certainly is not at all about what you acquire along the way. It's not about your wealth, you know. So, so success is really about, about how you give. You can give to people professionally. You know, I don't mean to be anti-professional about it, right? Um, but it's, it's not about what you get. It's totally about what you give. Um, and the, the older I, I have become, the more I so strongly believe that. And so I would, um, I would want to seed plant that for you. I want to introduce a concept here that, that that doesn't really fit in the flow, but it's so important that I want to make sure we talk about it. Um, it's the concept of the transformational generation. Um, and I think I came across this in a book by Stephen Covey. Um, the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People is a great book, by the way. Um, <clears throat> the transformational generation concept is that <clears throat> in all of our families, you know, there's there's things that there's, you know, families can be a mess, right? People can be a mess. Families can have, you know, problems and bad behaviors and curses and, you know, and, and, and things that, that are embarrassing and hurtful and they handicap us, you know? Um, and, and the transformational generation means that, that a person has the opportunity to decide that the buck stops with me. Whatever was the curses of the prior generation, whatever was the things that I may have been taught or the things that I may have seen or the, the ways that I've been programmed, that, that, that if I look back and I really realize that there's a lot of shortcomings in that and that I choose, I choose that my life will not be that. And most importantly, I choose that my children's lives will not be that. You know, that's a very powerful thing to think about, you know, and, and that's summed up in the concept of, of deciding to be the transformational generation. Um, you know, and it's possible you know, I, I would I would hope to think that that my kids don't feel that way. That they might feel like, wow, you know, we, we all did well, and that's nice. But but I think that's really it's, it's really rare, right? I know I know in my family, my dad struggled a lot with depression, and you know, and there was a lot of anger in our house, and and there was there was things in my parents' parenting style that I absolutely I know they did their best. I don't no no grudges, but I absolutely totally choose to that for not to be what happens from here on out. You know, and so and so if you're a person who's who's considering the concept of re reinventing yourself, you may be reacting to or trying to sort out the fact that there's things in your upbringing or things in your family that that you really don't feel good about. That they weren't healthy, that they're that, that every family has a mix of good and bad, but they really feel powerfully you want for that not to be you. And your journey, right? Um, that's good and that's important and it takes courage to think about that the concept of that is to be the transformational generation and so if you're if you're if you're thinking about how do you become who you want to be if that includes shedding some things that maybe you experienced or into you um, see that for what it is right and it, Hating other people who taught you those things, but you just you just with some focus and some ability to be articulate within your own intent to say I am choosing to be a transformational generation. Um, I think that's super powerful, and uh, and my brothers and I have talked about that a lot, you know, and um, and uh, and so it does. You know, our parents are wonderful, and taught us and provided for us, and we're very blessed. But there's things that we simply decided we're going to be different. And so, so that, that might, in fact, be informing somebody's, somebody listening here that might be informing, you know, why you or how you want to reinvent yourself. And so, so if that's part of your, if that's part of your story, 
um, we should just see it for what it is and be articulate in it. And that is, I've, I've known many, many, many people, and this is why America is a great place because you can do it here. Um, so consider if, if there's just something you want to change generationally. Um, okay, so on a less less heavy note, um, what do we got here? Yeah, I, I saw it, but then it disappeared. Okay, so Rebecca asked, um, I love that you're talking about your childhood, how your childhood can affect you who you are today. She just is a comment. I don't think people realize how much their upbringing impacts the people they have become. Oh, for sure, for sure. In some ways, good, right? Some ways a person can have a role model who, you know, it's funny, my, my, my daughter Shannon, who's my little one, I heard her say the other day that she feels like she got an MBA at our kitchen table because she, she was, you know, we just kind of worked on stuff, you know, and so I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm happy and, and fortunate, blessed that, you know, that you can, people are lucky to get programmed in a good way, you know, but I think more often than not, the things that can scar us or shape us are not the good things, you know, um, and so we're not hating on those people, but we can be real honest about it. Um, okay, so so here's, here's a, another totally, totally different topic. Um, I would encourage everybody to look at your 20s like this big elongated class that you're taking. Um, I have a good friend who, whose kids, are, they're now adults and they're very interesting people. You know, one is a Hollywood screenwriter and one is an organic farmer and they've become these super charming people. And what he told his kids was, was until you're 27, experiment, learn, try things, take jobs, fail, travel, um, which is different than doing stupid things. And we'll talk later about don't do stupid things, right? But but your 20s is a time for you to just sort out who you are. And I would I would say that I would discourage anybody from feeling some urgency that says by age 22, you have to you know, stamp the word accountant on your forehead or marketing on your forehead, you know, and get on the hamster wheel and get to work. Um, <clears throat> I would encourage people to be <clears throat> pretty expansive in their 20s and exploring who they are, especially if it was if it was Martin who said, and it was Martin, if it was somebody else who said, you know, that, that maybe they're 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 getting inklings that they want to be on a different path. Um, experiment with with some liberalism in your 20, 20s. twenties. Um, and then by the time you get to your later twenties, you should know and you should have better. Um, and I and I would say strongly that any job you take in your twenties that is just like a class, except they pay you, right? At, at the University of Akron, you take classes and you pay them. When you get jobs in the real world, you're taking other classes and now they're paying you, right? And so, so jobs you have in your 20s are classes you take where they pay you. So be centered in that. Um, somebody else just said something, please. Yes, Vishali just said, that's very good advice about experimenting in your 20s and not having pressures about achieving X at age 25. Yep, for sure, for sure. Um, okay, so collect role models and mentors as you go. Um, I think the difference between a role model and a mentor is is is, is, a, is a mentor knows they are your role model. You know, I mean, my, my role models include like, I don't know, Jimmy Buffett, you know, we all have different role models, um, but but really be mindful of it, right? When you, when you see somebody who you admire or you can learn from, or you think that there's facets of that, that that could be like maybe what you might be like when you're at your best, um, embrace those things, write them down. You'll literally collect them. And so you've got, you know, just a whole bunch of reference points, like, 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 you know, like, like stars in the sky to go, these are, you know, these are all people who I've seen and I, and I like what I see. Mentors are where you create relationships with them where you can talk about it. And so, um, and so, so really collect role models and mentors, um, be, be really, um, overt in knowing that you're doing that. Like this, I like this as a role model. This is something I think would be good for me. Don't just sort of appreciate it vaguely. Think about why you appreciate it. Right. It, it, right branching right off that, this is something that I see more students of your generation struggle with, right? Is, is, <clears throat> is settling comfortably into a place that says, people really want to help you. So shut up and let them, right? I, 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 I've, I've picked up on so many students in this world of social media, <clears throat> personal brand, elevator pitch, which you can tell us is a sore subject of mine. Um, that 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 you know people people feel the need to be, you know, so put together all the time. You know, and they don't don't ever want to look weak or they don't ever want to look, you know, less than like totally what they think they're supposed to be in the moment. You know, and that that becomes a disability, that 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 feeling that need to always, you know, 
feel like at the end of at the end of any conversation, you all have been proven right. You know, I would say approach it with humility and say, there's a lot of people out there who really know more than you do, you know, and they really want to help you. And so, so I would say, watch for that and let them embrace the fact that they want to help you. And then listen. Sometimes we hear things that aren't that they don't feel good, right? A person can give you feedback that that um, that is that is is painful in the moment, right? And one of the things that I learned a long time ago is that is that giving somebody honest feedback is 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 like holding up a mirror, and holding up a mirror isn't an act of hostility. It's not an act of hurtfulness. It's not an act of trying to embarrass or belittle somebody. It's simply holding up a mirror, right? You know, and, and holding up a mirror very often takes courage, you know, and if there's somebody who you know who cares about you and they're and they're taking the time and having the courage to look you in the face and tell you something they think you need to hear, well, then the answer is you really should listen to them. Um, you know, with good judgment, right? There's people out there who, who would give bad advice, but um, but there are people who really care about you and there's people who who really know you. In some ways, they see you better than you see yourself. And when there's people like that who give you, you know, really thoughtful, caring input, please create the space in your head to don't argue with it, just listen to it. You can decide three weeks later if it was right or wrong, but really seriously listen. So, okay, I think there was a message popped up there a minute ago. Yeah, that was me. This is perfect. Um, in our first session, Vinny Fisher, he was talking about humility and he said, it's not being humble is not thinking less of yourself. It's thinking of yourself less. Yes, um, good. Which I thought was really important. And then um, in last week's session, mm -hmm. in Prep and Ready, there was a lot of discussion just about being authentic. Um, and so I think both of those points just kind of lead exactly into what you were saying. Yep. Yep. Good. 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 And I, I really hope, folks, who are listening to this, that this is that this is time well spent. I hope this is valuable and interesting for you. You can tell I, I really genuinely believe these things. Um, just know, going in, the road is not linear and is not easy. You know, if if you look back to what I thought I was going to be when I was 22, you know, I'm super happy the way it all worked out. But it was totally not what I thought it was going to be. You know, and and frankly, it's been hard. It's been really hard. I mean, I could show you the bruises and the scars and tell you the stories, right? And so, so, so as you approach this, you know, kind of this is an old expression to gird your loins, right? But gird your loins, which means like to kind of cover up your precious parts because this is going to be a hard journey. And so, so just know that going in and don't, don't harbor any illusions that, that it's going to be linear or, or whatever like that. And so just know it's going to, it's going to be hard, you know, but, but that's where the learning is, right? The reason it's hard is why we learn. If it was easy, we don't learn, you know. And so, so there's all these, all these truisms, you know. Like when it's hard, when you meet somebody who's an idiot, or you have a major setback, or something just goes wrong, it will. It just will. And so, when it happens, they'll be like, "Oh my God, what happened? Something went wrong." The answer is no. Yeah, duh. Stuff goes wrong. And so, and so when that happens to you, be mindful enough to see it for what it is. Get over your horror in the fact that it went wrong or your embarrassment or your humiliation or your fear. You know, stand up. You know, there's an old expression, rub dirt on it, shake it off, get on with it, be resilient. And so, and so just know that, that that's where the learning happens, right? It's just totally where the learning happens, you know? And so if nothing ever went wrong, you would never learn anything. So when something goes wrong, that's where you really learn. So be calm, see it for what it is, Get back up with your feet, get back up on your feet and get on with it. So don't, don't let setbacks set you back. Setbacks are lessons. And I and this, this sounds a little bit like truisms, but but really think about it. This is about your journey, right? Okay, so that, that last slide I was on sounded very bullish, right? Come on, get up, shake it off, you know. And it and that and that's true. It's true to an extent, but there's a flip side to that coin that is genuinely be gentle with yourself, right? Some people try to advance through things in such a way that they can hurt themselves. They can, you know, create stress and depression and anxiety and bad behaviors and stuff, you know, and it, it really is important that on this road, um, inventing yourself, that you're really gentle with yourself, you know, and, 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 and we won't unpack what that word means, but you can, you know, think about that in the quiet moment, right? Be really genuinely good to yourself. 
Um, and so, so, so be, be good to yourself while you're, while things are going wrong and you're getting knocked down and you're learning what you're good at and not good at, and you're shaking it off and moving on and being resilient at the same time, don't be too hard on yourself. Right. I mean, nobody gets it right all the time. So just relax a little bit, be nice to yourself and then get on with it. So you got to get on with it, but, but, you know, be nice to yourself. So through all this, keep your, keep your head up and your eyes open. You know, because because the journey is going to be bumpy and unpredictable and do not put your head down. You know, do not, you know, close your eyes for fear of anything. Be alert and be watchful and keep moving through the journey and all the stuff of inventing yourself. Right. Okay. Here's here's another topic that I'm going to go on a riff about because it's so important. Um, it's about the difference between good decisions and bad decisions. So even if at age 22, you have no idea who you want to be or what you want to be. You know, um, you can still do a lot of stupid shit along the way, if I may be so direct, right? Um, you know, I, 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 I cringe. I literally get so upset when I see people who don't know what their journey is and, and along the way out of boredom or fear or a lack of using good sense, they do really stupid things. And, you know, and, and one of the things, please to think about and write this down, Good decisions in your life compound in good directions. Bad decisions in your life compound in bad directions, right? One bad decision makes the next bad decision easier. One bad decision sets up a circumstance for something bad to happen that you never intended. The opposite is true with good decisions. Good decisions put good things in motion, right? Good decisions set the circumstance for good things to happen, whether it's in relationships or in your health or in who you are as a person, um, I am, I am frankly really horrified by some of the bad decisions that I see people in their, in their late teens and early twenties making in our society. It freaks me out. And, and I would, I would, I would encourage you so earnestly to know the difference between good decisions and bad decisions. And even if you have no idea what your journey is, good decisions will equip you when you get there and bad decisions will keep you from getting there. You can do something stupid at age 22 that handicaps your entire life. And, and I, I tell you what, boy, I've, I just, I'm, I'm going to get up. I'm going to wag my finger. This is such an important topic, right? Um, yep. So Maisha, I think, talked about bad decisions, right? It's so, so, so important. Know the difference between good decisions and bad decisions. You may not know where you're going, but you can make good decisions and bad decisions along the way. So important. It's about, it's about your foundations, right? One good way to look at it is, is um, we'll just look at financial for one thing, right? Um, I, I see people, you know, racking up stupid debt for stupid things and I just cringe, you know? And, you know, and, 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 and the, the financial foundation you set for yourself, even if you're starting someplace very humble, I started very humble. My dad worked in the city of Cleveland. We didn't have two nickels to rub together, right? You know, we, we, the, the America is a great place because people can start super humble, right? But but every day you're you're building a strong foundation or you're building a weak foundation. You know, if you're if you get to the point where you're 26 and you really realize who you are and you're like, oh my God, I know what I want. And the answer is, oh yeah, but I'm forty thousand dollars in debt. You know, I, I accidentally fathered two children and I'm, you know, and, and I oh my God, look at my whole body is covered with tattoos that I now regret, you know, and oh yeah, well I do that little criminal record. You know, and so, well, God, well, guess what? I can't do that thing at 26, I just realized, you know, or if you say I'm 26 and well, that's good. You know, I don't have a lot of money, but I put a little bit away and I, you know, you know, and then I, I've been taking good care of myself and I've made good friends and, you know, I kind of, I've been pretty healthy. And so, so now I'm able to respond when an opportunity comes my way, you know, or when something, something goes right or something goes wrong. You know, the decisions you make are, they, they, they shape, they build the foundations you're working with. You know, when life opportunities or life challenges come your way. And so, um, so I, I, I won't bang this drum any more hard, but, um, but on the way to reinventing yourself, you know, like picture that old game of life we used to play, <clears throat> you know, you, you roll one thing, it's like move ahead 10 spaces. You roll something else, it's like move six spaces. This is how good decisions are. Good decisions are move ahead 10 spaces. Bad decisions are you're an idiot, move back 10 spaces. Think about the lessons you're learning. So, so you, you get, these things are important to me. All right, so another topic, please, that I think is really important as students are considering reinventing themselves. 
this is a very interesting concept, and I, I will introduce it here. Um, the man I work for, the man who owns Gojo, is a guy named Joe Canfer, and he's he's literally brilliant and a billionaire, and he's super thoughtful, and he's a, a great, great guy. And this is a lesson Joe taught me. And uh, and this is um, he has a lot of ties into the Middle East and to Israel, and I believe this is a this is a Middle Eastern or Israeli life lesson. And and it's about it's about when is it time to make the right investment in yourself. And and the, the the saying goes like this: the perfect time to plant an olive tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant an olive tree is right now. And and I, I've I've known so many people who look and they say they say oh you know if only I had done that nine years ago therefore I can't you know or I remember when my son Dan was like 13 you know he he wanted to do like something he wanted like he wanted to try like karate or something and and he's like I want to try it but you know I can't because I really didn't start when I was six. And I'm like, you idiot, you know, you're a 13 year old kid, you can do whatever you want. But he was busy regretting that he hadn't done it sometime earlier, you know? And so if there's things in your life that you wish you would have started a long time ago, you know, great. That just means you see the value in them. So plant that olive tree now. And, and, and do not, you know, do not sit reflecting on how you regret that you didn't do something 20 years ago. You know, it's a, if that reflecting helps you realize why it's important, if that reflecting motivates you to to get in that direction right now, then go get it. Um, but do not sit in angst over something you should have done a long time ago. That doesn't help anybody. So the second best time to plant an olive tree is right now. Does that make sense for everybody? Hopefully. Okay, so we're coming around the horn here. Um, be courageous. Many things fail, right? Which is not the same as do stupid things. We already talked about the concept of stupid things. I'm not talking about stupid things now. We're talking about trying things and failing. Do not be embarrassed by failure. Embrace it. Learn from it. You know, failure when you do something smart with every good intent and you really try and it doesn't work out, you know, and you failed. Well, guess what? Then you're smarter the next day, you know? And so, so do not be embarrassed by failure. Do not be embarrassed by saying, you know what? I realize I, I'm going to change my path. I realize this thing I did was wrong. I realize I'm not built for this. Do not be embarrassed by that because the fact that you would be embarrassed by it sometimes keeps you from even taking the chance. So do not be embarrassed by these things, learn from them, embrace them. And, and by the time you're 30, you're going to go, wow, I've really learned some things and I'm better equipped. So do not be afraid of failure. It's very important. Yes, Kimberly Helfman, we learn much more of as we do by, by success than by, by failure than by success. This, this is an expression I learned from one of my daughters, and that is to be intentional about who you are. If you get out of bed every morning and you just kind of go through go through your day by habit, I don't know, what did I do? Well, I kind of didn't really get up on time because I slept and I, I kind of, you know, I ate some kind of crap for breakfast. And I kind of like bumbled through my day, you know, just by reflex or by habit or by pattern or by something somebody else wanted to do. You know, it's just kind of like rolling through life reactively. You know, and, and it's a concept to say, no, I, I am intentional about who I am. I'm intentional about who I choose to be. And it and it's, you know, I have I have the I have the character and I have the the ability in just making lots of little micro decisions to decide who I want to be. And that's not the same as saying I decide I'm going to be the first woman to walk on the moon. It's to say, no, I'm being deciding that that today this is who I'm going to be. You know, and 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 so I would encourage you to be intentional about who you are on your journey again again that will help you move much more directly along the path pay attention this is this is another one and i this is a bit random but i believe it's important learn to be really comfortable and quiet learn to be comfortable with yourself in a quiet place and that and that's where you that's where you do your listening and your thinking you know that the the thing that the the, the person said earlier about you know, there, he's wondering if, if maybe he's, he's on the wrong path or he wants to change his path. You know, that, that I, I would encourage you all as you're on this journey to, you can call it meditation, you can call it prayer, you can call it just sitting quietly, you know, to, to really create quiet places where you can think about what you're learning. You know, not solve it, not, not justify it, not argue way through it, just be quiet and think about it. And um, and I think I think that's a challenge. The reason I put that in here, I think that that your generation, you know, always always living on on media this and media that. I think that it's very 
it, it, it may feel foreign or uncomfortable to embrace stillness. And so if we're talking about your journey to become your best self, to become your best you, um, I really, I really think that, that that journey will be much more fertile, you know, and, and, and you'll have much more sense of what you're about if you, if you learn to be comfortable with stillness while you're on the way. Okay, so while you're being still and being quiet, um, just listen and pay attention and, and, and life will find you, right? Ultimately, it's not about you charting a course unless you really, really, truly want to be the first woman to walk on the moon and you're going to, you know, break everything to get there. You know, it's, it's really about you listening and paying attention and learning and your life finds you. And somebody, somebody flashed in a second ago there, please, and I didn't, uh, I didn't see what that was. Somebody flashed something in. Yeah, yeah, it was a comment um, about successes and failures. Again, Lizzie said, um, I've learned a lot more about myself, skills, talents, likes, than when I take a big chance and fail at something than if I was successful, so. Yep, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. If we had two hours and a six pack of beer, I could tell you all a whole bunch of failure stories. Um, so, so, so the- We'll set that up for maybe that'll be our like closing session. We'll <laughs> <laughs> set that up, right? Um, and so, so the point is, you know, as you're, as you're inventing yourself, journeying to become your best self, just listen, just listen and be quiet. And sometimes it finds you, but you've got to be able to just be quiet and listen for it. And so, so do, do think about the extent to which in your life you're creating places just for you to be quiet and reflective. And, and my guess is that many, many, many people in their late teens and early 20s don't have that as part of their lifestyle now. And it's, it's very important to get you along the way. Um, so do these things for 40 years. And in the end, you will have reinvented yourself. Um, and you will have reinvented yourself by becoming who it was you were supposed to be the whole time. You just didn't know it, right? You just, because you just couldn't see it. And so, um, so, so what, I, what I've shared here is, is, is principles and some lessons, and um, hopefully it was valuable, hopefully it was interesting. Um, uh, but, but, you know, that if you do these things, at the end, you've got to look back, and, and if, you've, if you have made a life of good decisions, setbacks, failures, dramas, pain, tears, scars, it all comes with it. But if you've been really stacking up good decisions and listening and being good to people, you're going to look back and go, wow. This really turned out okay, and if you if you made a bunch of bad decisions, you might look back and go, "Boy, I really made good decisions." And so, so, so pay attention to to the principles and the lessons, and you know, think about it, and and be careful, and be good to yourself, and hopefully, in the end of forty years, you kind of feel good about who you invented. So that's my that's my story. How did we do? I love that. That was great. Um, we do have a few more minutes for questions, so I encourage everyone to you know. Um, put those in the chat. Um, Marty, if you don't mind, I'm going to switch over to a slide with the QR code for everyone to scan while we're waiting for yep. questions to come in, if that's okay. Yes, okay. for sure. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and share um, a screen here for those of you. There we go. Scanning this QR code for those who may not know gets you um, credit for uh, attending and for our EDGE professional development program. And for those of you who may be attending as part of a course requirement, uh, so go ahead and scan there um, if you have the suitable app. Um, I'll just do a shameless plug for our session next week um, as a LinkedIn workshop, but I think I appreciate this particular session so much, um, you know, because we do have some kind of more tactical sessions like this LinkedIn workshop, but I think this one kind of helped everyone take a step back and think about things in, in more of a big picture way. So, um, so I, I, you know, before we, we lose anyone, I just want to um, sincerely thank Marty um, for your time today. Really, really appreciate it. Thanks to everyone for attending. Um, we do have one question that came through. I think we have maybe a couple more minutes and it was from Marty. Um, and it was, so would you say reinvention is more about self-discovery than change? I think, I think that reinvention has to be deeply rooted in self-discovery. And so, so I think I think that that it's almost like the right starting point is self discovery and and self acceptance, right? And and I think I think to be really rooted in in knowing who you are, and that could take a long time to get to, and and understanding and liking genuinely liking who you are and being being grateful for who you are. I think that if you don't if you don't have that as the foundation, it'll be really hard to change because you're changing, you know, you're you're, you're just changing without a strong foundation. You're changing without really knowing what you're working with. And so I would I would be really thoughtful about self discovery and self awareness, right? Like really really watching yourself and thinking about who you are. 
Um, and by the way, for what it's worth, a Nichols advertising meditation is great. I would strongly recommend people think about meditation. Um, so I'm a big, big fan of that. So that was a freebie. That's great. Um, just really a lot of questions, uh, just comments. Thanks for your time and advice. I found it extremely helpful in joining Gaten Law from this session. Um, I think this session is unique from others that we're offering. So um, we really, really appreciate it. So Marty, anything else to add before we before we hop off here? No, no. Thank you for um, thank you for indulging me in telling everybody what I think. Because <laughs> it's, it's it's nice to find it's nice to find an audience where I can just kind of tell you how I think it is. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was exactly um, really pertinent um, and timely advice, and um, from someone who has a lot of experience. So, yes. All right. Well, God bless you all. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe, sane. Wash your hands. Use Purell. Um, and <laughs> right. be, and be good to each other. Okay, I'm out here. And, and anybody, feel free to, um, Kimberly can, can help you connect with me if anybody wants to follow up. Yep, happy right. to connect with anyone. Um, so thanks, everybody. We appreciate it. Um, okay. Thanks, Marty, one more time. Thanks. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye, everyone.